President of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, first, I want to welcome you for, and thank you for taking time from your busy schedules to come to Washington. These remarks are also being videotaped for the Williamsburg Conference for International Youth Exchange, so to all of you attending that conference, uh, let me extend a welcome. This is such a distinguished group, uh, both here and in Williamsburg. Perhaps I shouldn't tell the story of the mama mouse who was <laughs> trying to teach her offspring the ways of the world and found herself one day and her family face to face with a big, great big cat. And she was a smart little mouse though, so she started barking like a dog. And the cat of course turned tail and headed for where it came from and turned to her little ones and she Mama Mao said, now you see, that's the importance of a second language. <laughs> uh, 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 well, aren't you fellas gonna sit down? Aren't you fellas gonna okay. sit down? <laughs> well, we do need a, a second language, the language of understanding. Two years ago today, I took the oath of office and in my remarks, I said that peace is the highest aspiration of the American people. We will negotiate for it, sacrifice for it. I still believe deeply in those words, and the best way, the only way to that peace is through understanding among nations. Some of you may remember what Winston Churchill said of the United States following World War II. What other nation in history, when it became supremely powerful, has had no thought of territorial aggrandizement no ambition but to use its resources for the good of the world. I think that was one of the finest chapters in our history, and we have every reason to be proud. But today, almost 40 years later, there are many in the world, especially young people, who have no personal memory of that period, who do not understand America and what she represents. They do not know that America still possesses that spirit that Churchill described. A lack of understanding is a serious problem for our future. And that's where you, the members of the President's Council for International Youth Exchange, enter the picture. You and I strongly believe in the American ideal. We must trust our system and our values enough to know that young people from other countries, if they have a chance to visit us and live among us, will come to understand the American experience. And there's another side to this idea. While we receive guests from other countries, we will also send our own young people to experience other cultures and to carry the American values to their host countries. To help promote the exchange, last May I proposed the International Youth Exchange Initiative, which was endorsed by the leaders of the six other countries at the Versailles Economic Summit. And I'm pleased that representatives of our Versailles partners could be here today. I want to thank the members of the President's inaugural trust for the donation of a million dollars to the Youth Exchange Program. And I understand that almost another million four has million. been, what? Four million now, as of this afternoon. It's four million? No, a full million. A full million. No, two million yes. Dollars. All right. <laughs> Sold to the gentleman in the corner <laughs> chair. <laughs> And uh, I understand that the, another million has been pledged by Equitable Life, Atlantic Richfield, uh, NVF, Phillips Industries, Time, Westinghouse, and Archer Daniels Midland. Now, how much does that make it? That's the million. That's the million. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I'm confident that these are the first of many donations from the private sector to reach our goal of $10 million over the next three years. The Council's work underscores our strong belief in the private sector's role in building the bridges of understanding. Understanding cannot be measured, 
But our reward will come from those first awkward introductions when a young person meets his or her host family, and just months later, when those teary-eyed goodbyes as friends part company. So I thank you all for being part of this transformation of nations into individuals. And just within the last few days, if I could add, a little experience that I was not present to see, but that others of our administration were, while we've been entertaining Prime Minister Nakasone of Japan. And uh, at a dinner just recently, he and his wife and lovely daughter, uh, he, in a toast, revealed that his daughter had been in such an exchange to the United States. And before he finished telling about what this experience had meant, his daughter was in tears and he was crying. And uh, he also related and the young man who had been the exchange or the family and uh, that he had seen them and uh, that they too had shed tears on their happy memories of, of uh, having their daughter in this country and there they felt the same way about the young man that had been in their home on the exchange. And it was, I just thought it was uh, very convenient that this little experience had happened right now while we're meeting here. But again, I thank you all very much. And what this exchange does is carries out something I've long believed. The world will be all right if we all start talking to each other instead of about each other. Thank you very much. Mr. President, we thank you and as chairman of your Council for International Youth Exchange, I can assure you we share your conviction that the exchange of young people undergirds the cause of peace and broadens international understanding importantly. And we want you to know, Mr. President, that we are indeed pleased to have this opportunity to serve our nation through private sector cooperation with government. To you, sir, we pledge our very best performance in support of your initiative with the intent to carry through to success. The million dollar contribution from the inaugural trust represented here today by Charlie Wick, Bob Gray, Bill Fitzgerald, and Ambassador Mittendorf is a big first step that puts us on our way. But to you, sir, we promise to stay the course all the way until we have raised the entire $10 million. Mr. President, we thank you for being with us today.
getting recognition. They had tried repeatedly, as we all know, to get off the ground with their new flying contraption. And this story fits. They wired their sister Catherine. We have actually flown 120 feet. We'll be home for Christmas. She received the wire of that news and ran all the way to the local newspaper office, handed the wire to the city editor of her local paper. He looked at the wire and said, well, isn't it nice that we'll be home for Christmas? <laughs> Thank you. 